Money in Excel. Create Money in Excel Worksheet. It's time to excel in money by using Money in Excel. Here we are in Excel. We're basically in the File tab where we have the options on the left-hand side of the Home, the New, and then the Open. We're going to be in the New area. We're looking for Money in Excel, which is going to look something like this. Note that in order to get access to Money in Excel, you do need like the subscription model of 365 or something like that in order to access it. It will then be up top either in the new area here or down below, typically up in the upper left hand side. You might want to try searching for it, Money in Excel. We're then going to be opening that up, opening up Money in Excel. It will then create, we're going to create a new worksheet for Money in Excel. Here we are in our Money in Excel worksheet. So we have the custom worksheet. It looks kind of like a pivot table type of setup, which is going to, it is going to be using some pivot table type functionality. It is an Excel worksheet, so I won't go into a lot of detail on just simply the Excel layout, but we do have the ribbon up top, items up top. We're currently in the Home tab. You'll note a new item that has been included here. That's going to be for the Money in Excel. That then is going to show the ribbon or the bar to the right hand side this is kind of like the brain of money in excel in a similar way as you might see in say a pivot table so this is going to be the layout the design or the idea then will of course be to connect this information to the financial institutions take some of that raw data and put it into the money in excel this is similar to some of, of the accounting software functionality you might see in say a quickbooks type of software or some other software even some free software it's like i think there's an accounting software called wave accounting which is actually free and you can link uh, bank accounts or at least it was the last time I looked at it. But some people might like the idea of having it in Excel because it's a little bit more transparent. When you use some of these accounting softwares, one, oftentimes or usually you have to pay for it. And then two, when you pull in the banking information into bank feed, what I call bank feed limbo, you still have to add it from there in order to get it into the, to the system for the financial data. And it might be a little bit more transparent to see how that process works in Excel, especially if you're used to using Excel. So we're going to go through the tabs down below. We got the welcome tab, the instructions, the snapshot, the transactions, the, the categories. And then on the right hand side, we would need to accept the, the item or accept the plugin, which I believe I've already done here. And then it says we need to sign in to manage your finances all in one place. To use money in Excel, you must sign in with your Microsoft 365 personal or family subscription. So you basically need a subscription model so that you have the updated versions all the time of the Microsoft in order to be using uh, the Microsoft money in Excel. I'm going to go ahead and sign in and go through that process. So I'll go through the sign in process. We got to sign in then to the Microsoft. Once you do that, you'll get a screen that says, Let's communicate what emails should we send to. To use email in Excel, you must sign in with your Microsoft 365 personal or family subscription. And then if I check this off, it says I would like information, tips, and offers about money in Excel. I'm going to say yes, that would be good. I will continue on getting the tips. So then it says get your finances into money in Excel automatically to better understand your financial habits and work together your financial goals. So connect your accounts, choose accounts to connect details like balance transactions will be imported into money in Excel by played. So that's going to be the function of, of the information or the plugin, I guess, that's going to be taking the information from the bank into the system, view the organize and finance all in one place, get personalized financial insights with charts and alerts. Then we would go to the get started information. I'm going to do it later. We're just going to review the process at this point in time. Then we'll go back here later and start to look into connections. I'm going to save the, the worksheet now. So that's the next step you want to do. Make sure you have the worksheet someplace that, that you want it to be, some secure location. I'm going to go to the file tab to do that. I'm going to say save as. And mine's going to be on a folder that I put on the desktop called Money in Excel. You could save it, of course, to the cloud or some other location if you so do. So I put it into a Money in Excel worksheet. You can see it's called Money in Excel. I'm going to I'm gonna number it. You might want to put like the date on it so that uh, you can save it periodically, possibly by the date. Note it is an Excel worksheet type of file. We're going to save it. 
And then let's just read through some of these tabs. So we're going to got the welcome tab, which is going to give us the welcoming information. Of course, the instruction tab, which might be helpful, give us some insights on how this thing works. Obviously, we're picturing financial data coming from the bank account into Excel and then us categorizing them in some way to get the financial data to be to be looking the way it would be useful for us. We have the snapshot, which is going to give us some nice snapshot data, which will have Excel pre-organizing some of the information. And then we get to the real critical pieces here being the transactions, that being the financial data coming from the institutions and the categories, which are going to be used to help categorize the transactions. So let's just read through this here and, and see what we have here. So money in Excel. This template helps you see all your financial accounts in one place, make a plan and search your financial goals. Automatically import your transactions, keep a personal record of your finances, understand your financial habits, personalize your information for your needs. That sounds excellent. Did you know you must trust the Excel add-in uh, in access money in Excel? So we had the add-in on the right-hand side. We had to say, I trust that add-on or add-in or whatever, add-in something. And we trusted it. We said, yeah, we trust it. The add-in is to the right of the spreadsheet. Then add accounts to money in Excel. So that would clearly be the next step. We got to go and add the accounts, the institutions uh, to money in Excel to get those financial transactions to help us then to sort them. Number two says customize your categories to reflect your spending. So the categories from an accounting standpoint would basically be like accounts. So we got to customize the categories. That's where some of the added work is going to come in from us. Because when the financial data comes in from the bank, what is it going to look like? It's going to be raw data, meaning the bank knows increases and decreases, deposits and decreases, checks and other kind of electronic transfers. And the bank knows any kind of memo data that might be there for electronic type of transfers. The bank knows the dates that are going to be involved for it and the amounts. That's going to be the raw data. But what the bank does not know necessarily are the categories, the accounts that need to be assigned to it. So whether we use Excel whether we use any other accounting software or whatever to connect to the bank, we still have to do some kind of process of customizing the categories because there's no way that you could take that raw data and be correct on the customizations of all of the categories. So that's where some of the work will be put in place. And again, it happens here. And no matter you know, what kind of accounting software you are using to do that. So quickly switch sheets and glean information with the money in Excel pane. And so that's going to be our, our pane that's going to give us some snap, some quick information. Get a clear view and make a plan with templates. So we might have some added templates from, uh, from Excel here that will give us some more data, which is nice. And then number five says, see how spending habits add up, make changes, and reach your financial goals. So that's going to be great. So then the instructions, let's get down to the instructions. What do we have to do? Learn how to get started with money in Excel. Follow these tips and instructions to get the most out of your workbook. Get started. Make sure the money in Excel pane is open. That's going to be this item up top. So money in Excel, the panes on the right hand side. Uh, if it's not, click the money in Excel icon in the upper right corner of your ribbon. And then number two, we trust the add-in. So we trusted the add-in already. Number three, sign in with a Microsoft 365 family or personal account. So we signed in already. And we do have a, a Microsoft kind of a plan type of account where we pay on a subscription you know, type of model. Connect a primary financial account. So that would be your banking institution that you can then get the transactions and data from. Number five, categorize your transactions in the category categories sheet. Here's the category sheet. Here's your transactions. Categories are basically accounts like the telephone company, the utilities and so forth. And they're going to be used to categorize your transactions, which are going to be over here. And then we got to uh, number six, update your workbook to sync your recent transactions. So then we need to update it periodically to get the, the most recent state data from the bank. Note, money in Excel only works on desktop or web, not on your phone, not on mobile. So it seems crazy to me to try to do it on your mobile. I wouldn't even try that, but I'm sure a lot of people... Would have no problem with that if it was available, but it's not. You got to do it on uh, on the desktop or the web. So then save your workbook. Save your workbook before closing the file. Number two, uh, name your workbook by selecting save as and renaming the file. Number three, save your file in a secure location. We do have financial data here, so it wants we want it to be secure. Number four, come back to that location when you're ready to use money in Excel. Note, 
To share your Money in Excel workbook, the recipient needs to download the Money in Excel template, sign in with your Microsoft account credentials, and have access to your workbook online or a local copy. So that would be that's useful because that that's going to give you some security. They need to do that in order to get in to the to the data. And number two, you might want to save this or give it to say an accountant at the year end to help with your taxes or something like that. And you want to be able to know how to give them that information. Or you might just simply use this information to to glean the data, to pick the data up that you need in order to provide that to an accountant or tax preparer possibly at the end of the year. So Sheets Plus Money in Excel pane one. So we're on the Sheets Plus Money in Excel number one. The Money in Excel panes cites uh, to the right of the spreadsheet and is the quote brain end quote of the workbook. So here's the brain Money in Excel over here where we have if it's not on we we select the Money in Excel icon. Basically it looks like a pivot table type of setup which in many cases or much of the functionality is in essence pivot functionality number two. The money in Excel pane needs to be open in order to update your workbook with new transactions, capture changes uh, you make to your templates and view personalized insights on your spending. Number three, you can also add new templates from the money in Excel pane for recurring expense and net worth. And then we have the transactions sheet. That's going to be this one. That's where the actual data is. That's where getting down to where the, the tire hits the pavement on the road like where the work hat stuff happens there so transaction sheet number one the transaction sheet shows transactions from the financial accounts you have connected the money in excel pane will tell you when there are new transactions to update in order for updates to work correctly you cannot add columns or rows to the template so once the template is set up you got a template here they're saying they don't want you to add columns or rows because you're taking this information from the financial institution if you start adding columns and rows it might mess up the template so number two we got the review your transactions all transactions have already been categorized but you can change the category and merchant names so they're going to basically have the categorize over here so you got the data that that came into place then they're going to try to categorize it which basically means assigning an account to it typically focusing in on basically a expense type of accounts here and focusing in on like creating like an income statement now this is where the work's going to be because they'll try to categorize as best they can but again you can't guess perfectly based on the data that's going to be given from the raw data from the bank so you're going to have to then go in and prop and do some adjusting to the categories here so number three do not delete your transactions spreadsheet as that will affect all uh, of your other sheets so obvious this whole thing is tied together so you can't delete the the worksheet for the transactions and then the category sheet so now we got the category sheet to the right the category sheet is going to give you kind of like your list of account kind of like your chart of accounts here which is going to be used to then to assign to each transaction so that you can then create financials or create you know reports like possibly an income statement from it so the category sheet there are 18 default categories that cannot be changed Two, you can add custom categories. Be sure to include a category type. So we could add more categories. It's going to try to customize the categories for us. And then we go in and we could basically add our own custom categories as we see fit. Number three, the categories on the, on the spreadsheet are reflected in the categories column of the transaction spreadsheet. Number four, do not delete or, uh, your categories spreadsheet as that will affect your other sheets. So again, you can't delete the sheet that would be that would not be good snapshot if we go into the snapshot this is going to give us like a, a snapshot view so the system in excel has given us some custom kind of looks with the snapshot so snapshots see your spending trends month over month with easy to read graphs uh, to switch months click on the blue date so we can select the blue date tab up here and change each month and that can give us a nice little snapshot window of our financial data as we go so we have the current versus previous month spending we got this month's top spending categories and we've got the cum cumulative spending through throughout the month then we got the fre frequent merchants and the merchants where the most was spent so that's going to be our snapshot information nice then we're going to the transactions so transactions and categories once again this is where those tires are grinding against the pavement because that's where the work is happening 
at this point in time the transactions from the financial institutions then going into your transactions tab here once they're in the transactions area then they're going to try to basically assign a default category which is basically like an account an account that you you know a, a chart of account type of thing and so then you're going to you're going to have to say well is the account that they assign the proper account or not and and this is where it's going to be similar as with accounting software like a quickbooks or any other kind of accounting software where they're, they're, it's not a perfect system to assign the accounts. If you are if you were to be using something like a QuickBooks or something like that, the bank feeds would come into what I call bank feed limbo before creating the financials, like an income statement and a balance sheet. And you would then have to assign the accounts or the categories to it and then add them into the system, which can be a little bit uh, kind of magical or less connected, harder to see what is actually happening. Whereas, so that's where... Excel might be better for some people where you could actually have, you have a list of all your transactions here and you can see you're just going to go in and recategories, double check the categories uh, as they go. And then you'll, you'll see basically how everything is put together a little bit more transparently. So there's some pros and cons between those items. Obviously, you have a lot more functionality typically with a normal accounting system for your full service reports and stuff with a, with a QuickBooks or something like that. But if you want just raw data, made into like an income statement where you actually can understand it or you see what's going on very clearly and transparently where you see where the connections are then excel is probably a, a you know a nice transparent way to see that and then we have the categories which are going to be on the right categories it says add custom categories and uh, sub subcategories below then assign them to the transactions in the transactions sheet you can only edit or delete the categories and subcategories you've added so this category sheet, this is going to be like your chart of accounts, which then feeds into the transactions, where once you have the data from the financial transactions, you can assign the categories from, from the dropdown, which basically I'm imagining here would come from the category sheet, right? And then the categories on the left says, uh, add custom categories in the empty rows below uh, the default categories. Make sure to select expense, income, or transfers under the category type. So you got your category names, which would go in this column. You got your category types, which they only gave us the category types of expense, income, and transfer. So notice that's limited. That's going to help us to create an income statement. But uh, it's, it's, it's not no transactions here for a balance sheet type of activity. So it's going to give us, you know, if you're looking to get a Schedule C type of business for the end of the year and get that business transcript in, then you, you can use this information in order to do this so it doesn't have the full you know balance sheet categories here you could possibly use that transfer if it's going to be a transaction that shouldn't be on an income statement type of account uh, and so we'll take a look at that more in future presentations and then on the right subcategories to add custom subcategories in the table below select a category from the drop down menu and add the related subcategory in the next column so then if we want subcategories, we can then customize our subcategories. So once again, obviously, these two sheets are where the data will come in. We, we sign up, we, we connect our bank account, transactions feed in, we select our categories so that we can then assign a category for them. And then this data will be used to help populate the rest of the worksheets, including snapshots and so on, and possibly, you know, reports and whatnot that we can build from that data. So we'll continue on with that next time. We're going to go make sure that we save this and then move into it again next time.